Meanwhile, stocks are rallying across the board today as they try to recover from a multi-week slide. Eight down weeks for the Dow, seven down for the S&P and NASDAQ. But my next guest says this reset was needed and much of the selling has just calmed down what he terms manias and excesses. Let's welcome in David Bonson. He's chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. Is it the tungsten cube you're talking about, David? Well, look, I think that the shiny objects is what we've been calling it for quite some time. It's those things that are bought because they're popular. They obviously had great returns in 2020 and 21. Uh, you could debate if FANG counts in this or not. I would argue FANG is a legitimately great series of investments that just simply got very overpriced. But the stuff that's gotten slaughtered is stuff that doesn't necessarily have a definable intrinsic value. And those things that relied on multiples continue to expand, they've really got hit very hard. And so are we now at a point that investors can feel comfortable moving ahead with a broad investment in the S&P, for instance? I wouldn't. And the reason why is because I think that when an index uh, is so weighted to its huge capitalization companies, you're really relying if, as an S&P cap weighted investor on more multiple expansion. I can't come up with any reason to see why the S&P will go from 19 times to 22 times. Maybe you get eight, nine or 10 percent earnings growth, but already the multiple contraction is offsetting that. So I think really index investors for quite some time are going to be sitting around waiting for PEs to go higher. I know I'm talking my book, but we think you have to have free cash flow growth, and we do that through dividend growth. That's where I think active management is really having its way right now. If I'm right here, you like names like Simon Property Group, Walgreens, and J.P. Morgan. Let me ask you about J.P. Morgan. I, I was just speaking with Larry Lindsay, obviously, about the prospects for loan growth in the years to come, especially if we have any signs of credit stress. And as somebody who also believes that we are at risk of a Japanification theme here, why do you like the financials? Well, I don't like the financials. I like J.P. Morgan, and there's a really big difference there. I like J.P. Morgan because since 2009, when we first bought the stock, there has been some reason to dislike financials through that entire period, and they have lapped their competitors. Whether it's a period where loan growth is down and yet they're seeing better deposits or deposits are down, but investment banking is doing better or trading. They're so globally diversified and not just diversified the way all the banks are, diversified as a leader. They're the best in all of these businesses. And we've seen J.P. Morgan outperform and outshine through execution through all these different cyclical challenges. Do you think J.P. Morgan is the only financial that people should own right now? The only big bank financial, yes. Now, we own some asset managers as well. I heard Joe Terranova on the last segment say something similar. We like Blackstone and Apollo, who are more alternative asset managers with huge fee-based businesses. But when people talk about financials, they're usually talking about net interest margin, yield curve, big banks. This is sort of a different way to be in the financials, and we really like those plays a lot. Final question. Do you have to have an answer for the recession question? Uh, as you're looking through these businesses, especially maybe one like a Simon property or even like a Walgreens? No, it's not just that you don't have to. It's that if you do, I don't want to listen to you because you're going to be wrong. <laughs> Any, anybody out there who is saying they know when the recession's coming is just simply trying to be lucky. It's totally untimable. And even if they knew when the recession was going to start, they don't know when it's going to end. They don't know what the magnitude will be. And they don't know how much is already priced into markets. And so I think that that is not a great question for investors to be making timing decisions off of. If we believe that there was going to be a broad and massive recession, Session, like a 2008 environment, that's a different story. But nobody's looking at that. I expect there will be a recession and I expect it will be further out than people think. And I think it'll be less deep than people think. Final, final question then. Do you think free cash flow yield is the most important thing investors should be looking for right now? It's the second most important. The first most important is how much of that free cash flow companies are willing to share back with their investors, how shareholder aligned the C-suite is. You need a free cash flow yield to have money to give back to investors. Then from there, you need a cultural willingness in the C-suite to grow dividends. That's why we're having such a great year, because those companies are actually doing just fine in this market environment. It's almost felt like some like little sketch. Who are the guys who used to do that? Who's on third? Who's on... You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone. Yeah, that, uh, that, we sort of have that kind of thing going here, don't a we? A little bit of that repartee. David, thanks for your time today.
Appreciate it. David Bonson with the Bonson Group.